Right, so hello everyone, this is Michi Hoya from Avid Chronic Racing and today's the day Af um, Project Cars 2 has been released so uh, we have gone a, a quick look about what this game has to offer and we're just hoping to a private testing session and we take the Mercedes AMG D GT3 and we race it on one of the new content, uh, which is Circuit of the Americas. We have a look at the settings, session start time, make it to PM, time progression, real time, season is summer, well, weather slots. Um, yeah, you can put like four different conditions throughout the session, I think. Can uh, swap between quite a lot. Light cloudy, medium clouds, heavy cloudy, overcast, light rain, rain, even a blizzard, and heavy snow. So, how about just taking it for sunny in the beginning and storm in second, and just save it? So, we just head out and track and see what these cars or this game is like so I would recommend to just like build a setup from scratch um, and just have a look on how stuff is on how stuff is done so if you have any questions towards like game or anything just shoot and ask um, looking at the at the entering screens uh, ambition temperature 32 degrees, track temperature 62 which is a bit high to be fair despite all this sunshine and, and stuff is going on so looking at the setup race engineer ideal for drivers who are experienced in tuning a car, edit setup so we look at the race engineer so probably here you just learn about how to um, set up a car so we just have a look uh, what can be done so here you can looking at tires brakes and chassis brake pressure brake balance want to move that a little bit forward brake duct plank open front down force and rear down force so we put down force at the front to very high and we keep the rear down force, suspension, dumpers. Want to take a little less fuel to be fair. Air restrictor. That might be the cooling. Engine brakes. Gears. Well, you can't even make the gears any shorter, so we. Oh, you can't even shorten the drive. Right, differential. Lots of stuff to do there. But we just keep it as it is right now and we just save it. And we have a go and go, see go, go. what we can do here. So manually go out of the pit I think yeah you have to manually turn on the pit limiter so so far as you can see quite nice graphics um, quite some crowded screen the world fastest game of being under my belt and some minor racing and eye racing with a GT3 having tested the Bentley GT3 on R Factor 2 at the Sim Racing Expo uh, where by the way Project Cars 2 has been shown off a little bit um, this car does not feel as aggressive as you might think it feels Yeah, 
acceleration feels quite heavy, braking feels quite heavy, the car itself feels very heavy. Despite going 250 you can't really like feel the speed being done at, at the second. A little look up already. By the way, all the um, assistants have been uh, shut down. So no ABS, no traction control, nothing in place. So there was quite quite a lot of grip with the top turn. So it's just from the inlap the car feels a bit weird, like sometimes having really nice grip, sometimes having no grip at all. As soon as you look up, um, you cannot really feel the car at all, I think. Of course, feedback, despite the fact that I'm racing a G25, is very cool at the second. And there's no real feedback whatsoever. Yeah, you just have to feel the car by by listening, by looking, by any recognition. So slide. So once you slide, it's uh, the car really gets off the grip. Oops! It's a full spin. At least you can hear the tires cropping a lot. First lap going into trash. Um, it's, it, it really feels like the tires are overheating already. Despite the fact I uh, just did a normal in lap without any spinning until just 20 seconds before, but as you can see, there's quite some unbalance in the car at the second. So. Looking at temperatures, uh, they are around 110 degrees, which is way too hot in the back, I think. And I just see that I got fit wet tires on. Is that right? So I might just go back to the pits and recheck. Um, to be fair, I would not expect to have fit, uh, been fit in uh, wet tires in dry condition as a default setup. But actually, the car feels so weird and so less grippy sometimes, and sometimes it's grippy just like here. In this turn 18, whoops. Uh, the car feels so different compared to the opening lap that I might actually have taken wet tires. just by default, which would be weird. Why you would uh, choose something like this as a default game-wise or software-wise. So we just enter into the pits and I really have no clue where I came from before. Oops, I probably already passed the garage. So we go back to the pits. Oh, we look at the setup, there is setup, tires, it says automatic by weather, ice, all terrain, wet, hard slick, soft slick, so we take soft slick at the front and take the same at the rear, be done, save it. Go drive again. Go, go, go. And it's just the case, like now we got soft slicks on. So, interesting. Re enable pit limiter. So, the screen at the second um, is very informative in terms of what it shows. Like it shows travel, bump, 
height of any suspension part. Um, it shows all the temperatures of the tires, inner, center and outer. Oh yeah, the grip difference with those tires is ridiculous. Um, so while, while driving you really can see interesting values like torque and, uh, and power on the engine uh, that's provided by the engine. Um, stuff like this, G-forces. Still can see something about lap times and steering inputs and stuff. So this is full HUD gone, and this is basic HUD. You probably want to have most of the time. Um, I just agree with with Govan, who was being on the chat saying, looks like a joke. I mean, um, talking about the setup stuff where wet tires are taken as uh, default, that definitely is a joke. I mean, yeah, we have selected wet weather in some time of this session here, but actually it's full dry, 60 degree track temperature, and the PC is uh, putting wet tires when being set to automatically um, tire camp out being chosen by live weather. So, yeah, I think nothing else to say here. And on those softs, the car feels, feels a lot like nicer. Um, I just hope that uh, the tires do not overheat as much as they did for the, for the wet. Um, currently, this is looking good. They have a lot more grip, so uh, let's see whether I can finally put a lap together. What's interesting though is um, many people would like to use engine brake um, on the car while shifting down. To me the car just does not shift down fast enough, so maybe a call according to the RPM. Don't shift uh, doesn't occur when it's still in too high RPM. So like the engine save mode on the downshift is being enabled. Oops. So I already went off track again. Anyway, just trying to go somewhere. Yeah, and meanwhile the GT3 car is a little bit more aggressive. I don't want to say it feels good. I mean, it can be a challenge to drive. At the second, it just feels um, close to what the GT3 car should feel like. Um, yeah, if you encounter any other questions on, on the game so far, like for me, like for many other people, it's the first, first try, the first look on that game. And I really want to call it a game rather than a sim. Despite the fact that this GT3 car feels somewhat real. Whoops. Nice spin. So we change brake bias more to the front. Maybe this helps braking a bit. Um, while being to sim racing expert, I definitely can say they improved the game um, by somewhat. Um, you remember people who was racing the Formula A in Virtua Kart 1? Um, they might have seen like incredibly long dis break distances for the Formula A there. Um, they definitely fixed that, like the. Um, the Formula A has some kind of brakes now, rather than just engine brake. Uh, that was the feeling I had when racing Formula A in Road to Cars 1, so they fixed that. On GT3 cars, I have to say, um, they were quite good before. As you 
you can see this uh, Mercedes is quite challenging to drive at the second and at higher temperatures still in good range I think having no grip on the rear whatsoever right now but in fact the car is on the steering so I'm just gonna see how this this goes um, according to the tire template at the very bottom you could already see that uh, some rubber has been gone especially on the rear right uh, simply don't want to lock up And it's very easy to look up. I mean, um, coming from high speed uh, from the straight, I felt like literally being too easy on the brakes, and now I didn't even push it that hard for turn 30. That was, and immediately the front jammed. Yeah, and I just got a, a little hint from Nick Fry Soft. Um, actually, you're right, I'm driving this car without any ABS or any traction control. But for that, like, it feels, it feels very solid, especially on, on, um, on point of traction control. Like, you can't really spin the tires out of the corner. And here I'm full throttle as well. Um, of course, it's a little bit aggra aggressive uh, because of no uh, traction control or something. Um, but it just feels that the setup is like oversteer a lot, and it's the base setup, so quite quite hard to drive, I think. I probably have to see whether I can put some ABS and some traction control on by the setup uh, compared to what iRacing is offering here. Um, having the screen free at the minute, don't know really why. So, yeah, talking of the game, I mean, it has like close to 50 gigabyte of, uh, of memory space being taken away from your HDD. So, um, this is quite massive due to a lot of graphics and they're not even maxed out. What I do like though is the anti-cut system, so as soon as you really go off the track, um, the times get deleted at the second, which feels some sort of good. Because it's just accurate, on, you know, it would be just there. Uh, and I just saved it, and despite not leaving the track at all, I got the race time deleted. For like no reason, so I might have to rethink on what I just said. I mean, if you just go to the outside of the. Uh, I'm crying out loud. I really need to do some work on the set there. So I return to the pits. I haven't done a, a lap yet, which is interesting. So we go to the setup. And I fully agree with Nick Fry, like, P1 
people didn't really do good base setups here. Um, the anti robot on the back is a little bit too soft, I would say. Um, differential. So, power, making those a little bit more closed. Preloads. So stuff kicks in a little later, clutch is 4, spool, so I would expect some ABS or something being here, but there isn't, not at all, so you probably have to put on ABS by, by yourself. Um, It's interesting, the setup just by numbers does not look too oversteery. Um, steering ratio was weird as well. I could feel that from driving. I mean, I don't really know. I can put up um, the splitter to 2 and read down first to two, uh, 12. Say done, say save keep it to the setup slot and probably just race it again so we put on pit speed limiter forgot to change brake by so I'm gonna do it manually here I'll take it at 56 I'm just going to look at that screen for a minute. It's quite overcrowded here. But what I'm going to do now is... Um, so it says anti-lock brakes not available. Interesting. Traction control not available. Interesting as well. So... Basically you have to drive this G23 car as it is, presumably. Quite very, very interesting. And the car does not feel too bad at all on an outlap. However, as soon as you get some racing in, it will feel entirely different, I think. Um, hey Michael, thanks for your question here. I'm running Project Class 2 on the Steam version of my PC here. I'm not running any PlayStation or Xbox or consoles whatsoever, so probably everything I'm, I will do uh, will probably always be on, on a PC. For some reason the car just feels better by a mile. outside and see whether my time gets deleted immediately again by just using the track. I went too far to the inside to get it triggered again probably. Car balance has improved a lot. I never expected the splitter uh, on the rear wing to make that much of a difference. So that means if I put it to if, it, if I put the rear wing to two or one, that would make it continuously spinning probably.
So this was heartbreaking, no lockup whatsoever. And here I immediately, as soon as I touch the brakes, front tire is locked up. Maybe it was also the change of, uh, of the torque and, and the differential that made the car more stable. It, it feels entirely different despite the fact that it really changed a lot. Um, I didn't do many changes so the impact was quite heavy. Close to getting the lap annulated again. Final corner. As soon as you were in a slide or a spin, it takes it long for the tires to uh, take grip again. Now we put in 2.11.3. Oops. Yeah, I'm off track. Time deleted by race director already. And the time went red immediately. Oh, sorry, the lap time was 2 well, yeah, you really need to get used to all that stuff being displayed. So we've just put, I think, uh, 30 liters of fuel in the beginning. Can I see this anywhere? Not on that screen. which normally can have different fuel maps, car management, so there's nothing to do on that, race strategy, swap drivers, That delta has just been shown to me. 22 liters left of fuel. <coughs> so, when setting up the, the game, I just set everything to be real. Uh, so we burned 8 liters in 3 laps, something like that. And I don't know how much the tires have suffered so far. What is very nice though is uh, the gap on uh, the top screen. This will remind people of iRacing, like the Delta R, Delta Best plugin for R Factor 2. So we just try to do our best now. Some little look up. Risky corner, but we're minus. Only minus four seconds, really. I can't believe that. We don't want to throw it away here. If it's really four seconds, and a little bit too wide. Good for six. It just feels like to me that ah, this delta is showing my delta to the previous lap, which is no point really of doing so, because you do want to compare to your to your best lap, ah, potential lap, fastest lap. There you go. You can swap that around. Probably want to have it in the fastest lap. So we just can see our real delta. We're like four tenths behind there. We're gonna be even more behind after that corner. So that was a weird spin. 
that really felt strange. Yeah, now the rear tire is a little bit hit, I think. We went wide. So we probably just try to carry speed out of the last corner and give it a proper try again. Uh, what is done real good though is uh, there is considerably less to no input lag, which I personally like a lot. Of course you have to turn off uh, virtual sync or something, um, but still. But once you're in a slide, not really a big chance of covering that. I've driven that GT car in um, on the Sim Racing Expo on the Nurburgring on the Grand Prix track. Uh, it was not that difficult to control at all. Like, I didn't even spin once there. And trust me, this uh, Nerva Green track has some narrow braking as well. So long for the grip to step in. And you really can can hear the tires scrubbing her uh, for God's sake. Turn wide again. So just give it another try. Fifty meters left. to them before that would be great. Looked a bit a, a little bit better but not good enough though. Despite the fact we're gaining on our lap time. Oh for crying out loud, really. So as soon as you hit first gear you're spinning around. Half seconds gap to our lap time. Yep, that tire kept like standing for ages. And now, with with a proper sim, or at least some some real feedback, you would ex expect any movement on the wheel. Nothing. Not even a little bit of shaking due to your flat spot. Simply nothing at all. Which is weird. Which is very weird. So there's a lot of time to be found in the, in the 
find a sector there. Miner steering input. Car behaves a lot better. I want to stay tight here. Ah, uh, yeah, a little bit too much to the inside. However, I'm fine finishing that lap. And I got the cutting warning again. I can't really agree with. And again, really, why? All right. Once the tires just start blocking and locking up, you can't really re-enable them running again. So we're going to exit the mode here and just see what else there is on. Um, time trial. So someone put in a 266 with a showing class. Vehicle, no vehicle set yet. I do not believe that all these cars are really equal, so I'm trying to add the ghost of him and just see what it's be like to race against a ghost in, in, in time trial. So I wonder whether the setup is fixed for that, it should be in my point of view because time trial should be the best driver on an identical set but as you can see you can edit the setup quite hard so different approach obviously um, making a time trial with uh, yeah setups being enabled so description stable setup blue setup I just take this, save it, go back. Um, oh wait, I want to load one. I want to load this one. I go back. Uh, simply start. And let's see what this is gonna be like. A lot of numbers to the left there. Up ahead, there's the ghost. They fixed fuel. Fuel is static, not moving at all. And this is, I mean, I can agree we want to have everyone with the same tire or, or the same fuel load, but at the very same second, you're allowed to change setup. Which is something you have to think on a little bit, I think.
see about the accuracy of the clutch. Yeah, there is some difference in putting the clutch pedal down. So we're just going to try for another move. Right, the game doesn't even tell you you go the wrong way. And if you enter just the pit entry, it tells you about the speed limit. The well, that's interesting. So going reverse is allowed. And I just spun again. Oh, for crying out loud. So, remain on the speed limit. But there is no sign of me going the wrong way. Right, turning left. I'm not in the car. Bumping on the curb too hard though. The ghost will be quite ahead on the very first few meters, I think. Yeah, and the, and the lap time's been deleted for breaking out on the curb. Right. Slide and tires will be overheat and gone. Yeah. Interesting, fairly interesting. I'll just restart the session. Yep, all progress will be lost. I know that. Let's see if. My old setup has been reloaded or if it just went to default. So this time, despite going wide, the lap time hasn't been deleted. And I just have been questioned whether I simply like the game or not. Um, at the second, this is a tough one to answer because driving this Mercedes is hell of a fun. Uh, but at the very same time, it's like F1 from uh, 2017. There's so many like mistakes in the game. E.g. not adding traction control or uh, ABS to a GT3 car. Like if you push it, no traction control available, no anti-lock brakes available. Um, no force feedback whatsoever, uh, people will say you don't need force feedback or something, it's, it's something you do not have in the regular car as well. Yep, right, yeah I agree on that, but still, um, so many games make use of the FFB, and here it's, to me it just feels dead, like I can't even um, feel the difference between the car sliding and not sliding. Not even t talking about curving or something. You hear the curving going on, and you see the car shaking a little bit, but no bumps and no elevation changes being transferred on the on the force feedback. So I would say, give me some more minutes and hours to really give a um, give a decision on whether I like the game or not. Um, I might be too much out for realism due to a factor 2 or something. So in general the game is fun, that, that's for sure. It will enable you having some fun hours playing. But apart from that, um, I cannot see it being considered a sim. 
just touch the curb and the car goes off, which is sort of wrong. But I'm gonna end it at this point. Um, surely I have to find out a little bit more about the game itself. Um, to see what's the AI, AI like, so we probably just have a quick custom race. Uh, we raced the Mercedes and we raced in Circuit of the America, so we select that. Flaps, number of flaps, weird setting, but you put it to three. Lightly clouds, start rolling. Information, yep, yes and no. Mandatory pit stop. We're gonna do it four or five. Make it five. Do a mandatory pit stop and if uh, formation lap. Standing start. So that does not mean formation lap. Right. Mandatory pit stop though. We keep weather like it is. Time progression, real time. Number of flaps five. Type day default current date. Well, if you want, save rules and regulations. Everything on opponents. Opponent skill level. Put it to eighty and be beaten quite badly, I think. I'm sorry for the screen being lucky at the minute. Um, I need to work on that again. So, we just tried to race once. Put in first gear. That was weird lightning when the lights went off. There is lightning reappeared. Alright, they behave very weird at the second. They have very strange lines to me. Too wide, right side. Still there, right side. Clear. Right. You're clear. So, is there any slipstreaming? Thanks. Right side. All clear. Two legs back. One leg behind. So the AI just crashed here. Two legs behind. Still two legs back. Something that's really annoying is that water. Don't take too much risk. Try and squeeze fast as you can. Uh, 
want to put brake wires a little bit more to the back since the front tires are blocking up quite easily. So the pit stop has been set to manually, um, so we're going to be particularly interested in what am I supposed to do. Those are very weird lines of the AI. Wipers go on. So that wasn't my pit box. Where is my pit box then? Is it this? So you actually do not have any idea what is your pit box? Is it that at the back? This is interesting. And that was that was just it. Right, so I was go, go. stationary quite long with that pit box to look for my pits. And yeah, we lost tons of positions being dead last. I have to say the sounds are spot on there. Probably you're right, Nick, enabling this pit box marker would help. Right side. So, despite the fact the AI's aggressiveness is just 50%, That's the best second sector so far. Oops. Um, He's on your right. He just ran me. Clear. No, not light break, so. He's still there. Very weird behavior. No, back. Like I clearly was up the inside for that turn 12 and he just turned in and hit me. And after he passed me again he just went for brakes. Cars ahead coming out of the pit again, just two or three 
class building there. The new personal left, great job. Step out completely and make me go up, upside down on, on the race direction. Slightly touched the brakes and it made me spin. Right. So we're dead last again. Just one more lap to go. Great job. Come on, keep on it. Yeah, that's really a great job. Yeah, but honestly... Really? Um, no grip, no brakes. Power obviously. This car really feels like it goes. So the McLaren G650 um, GT3 was a lot better to drive in our factor 2 than this. already again. Like the rear tires are quite gone though. Um, very weird timing on the left, I have to say. of the game is probably be the sound and the graphics. But I think it's entertaining. So I think that was it, wasn't it? Yeah. 
So, that was actually the first look into Project Cars 2. Um, hope you somewhat enjoyed it. Um, if you follow me, you're gonna be happy about that. Really appreciate you watching me, guys, here. So, yeah, have a nice evening, have a nice weekend, and see you next time around.